Hey, what's going on, everybody? This is the Blockchain Backer, bringing you the latest cryptocurrency news and analysis. Today, we're going to be talking about the Bitcoin price chart. We spent the last couple of days talking about the altcoin market. We talked about XRP. We've talked about the behavior of the altcoins and how they move in tandem with each other and how right now one of the biggest fights going on in the market is to see if the altcoin market is capable of getting back through this supportive level if it's turned into to a resistance in here. We've seen several assets to do it, such as Ethereum Classic and Uniswap and Matic, Numerare and QNT. But not everybody has had the luxury of getting through there and the entire collective altcoin market cap hasn't gotten through. And really the big boys in the market, such as Bitcoin, Ethereum, Binance Coin and XRP have yet to break through that level. And with those four being the biggest ones in the cryptocurrency market, we could see over here on the altcoin market, we haven't gotten through. And hate it or love it, when you look back through all the data, it all says that Bitcoin is pretty important and Bitcoin really tells the story. If Bitcoin's running up, the altcoin market's running up. Even if Bitcoin's running up in a big old retracement, the altcoin market is running up at that time. If Bitcoin's heading down, so is the altcoin market. So. I think it's pretty important that we take a peek over here at Bitcoin, whether you like Bitcoin or you like the altcoins, whatnot. I think it paints an important picture for the rest of the market. So today I wanted to talk a lot about the different theories and ideas on what's happening in regards to Bitcoin's crash on whether the bottom is in or the multitude of theories stating that Bitcoin is going to go down further from here. Now, I have spent thousands of hours looking at cryptocurrency charts, and there's one thing that I've definitely learned throughout the history of time, and it's one simple mistake. Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. Fool me three times, not going to happen. And where I'm getting with that is that if we look at the last two major bears that happened in here for Bitcoin, both of them fell about 85% and both of them took about a year to play out. Both of them kind of bottoming near the end of the calendar year, early beginning of the next calendar year, but in essence, taking about a whole year to play out and both falling about 84 to 86%, as we can see in there. Even when we look over here at the Bitcoin market cap, both of them were 83% over there on the market cap. So a lot of the consensus is out there is that, hey, we do this every time, so we're going to do it again. The issue with these types of things is that everybody sees it and everybody piles into it in the exact same manner. And essentially the market will change on that third time because everybody recognizes what they're supposed to do the third time. It's not just in this circumstance, but it's in most circumstances within charts. The third time doesn't do what the last two times did. But this is one of the most common ideas out there right now is that we are repeating what we have done twice. We're now just waiting for a whole year to play out and we're waiting for the price to fall 84 to 86% and we're good to go. And the general idea of all of it is merely saying we're going to do what we did these last two times. Now, when we look at both of those previous bear markets for Bitcoin next to each other, we can see some similarities that ended up happening in here. Initially, Bitcoin fell all the way down in here in 2018, and in 2014, it fell all the way down in here. They actually both ended up having 70% falls in here. After the initial 70% fall, we could see that Bitcoin ended up bouncing about 100%. That happened in 2018, and it also happened in 2014 to where they both bounced right there to that same level as well, before then rolling over and capitulating, and then rolling over and capitulating. So both of these structures, while a little bit different, were really the same thing. They both fell 70%, they both bounced up to the same level, they both rolled over, then they capitulated down to the same level, from top to bottom. And from a time perspective, they were both relatively close. The 2014 crash actually took two months longer than the 2018 crash. So one crash took about a year, another crash took about a year and two months. But as we can see, there's incredible similarities between the two with the initial crashes, the bounces off the initial crashes, rolling over and capitulating, both being of equal distance and pretty close in time about a year to a year and two months for both of them. So if you were to apply the same methodology to exactly what's happening to Bitcoin currently, you would assume that Bitcoin's market cap will fall about 83% and it'll take one year to one year and two months. So if we shift ourselves over here one year, that gets us to November 9th. 
So about late December, early January. That's a year to a year and two months. And if you get an 83% fall coming in here for the market cap, it's right back down into these price regions right over here which on the Bitcoin price chart is right down in here, around $10,000 to $12,000 for Bitcoin. Somewhere in November, December, or early January, if you go with the idea that it's going to repeat itself for a third time. However, there are a couple of problems with this theory, and we could see that by looking over at what the Bitcoin price action has been doing so far, and that we could see that the action of Bitcoin has actually been quite different than what both of these looked like at that time. And then we look a little bit closer in here, we can see that like we were discussing in both circumstances, the price of Bitcoin fell down here both in 2018 and in 2014, and then it bounced its way back up. Crash, bounce, roll over into capitulation. You can hide all these things and show that is not what we have been doing here for Bitcoin currently. One could argue, hey, we've come down pretty close. We're just about as far, even though we've gone further, but that maybe a bounce is coming right now and then it can roll over and do something like that. But to assume that this is following both of these previous fractals, these previous bear markets for Bitcoin, the next phase of this would be a move back up, as in both circumstances. But right now, it's looking very different than both of them did. Both of them had 70% crashes, followed by 100% bounces, then rolling over and capitulating. Bitcoin has had no bounce whatsoever, and structurally very different than what both of these were at that time. So... In order to keep the dream alive of Bitcoin following what the last two did, from a structure standpoint, it's not following it. But if it were to follow it, one would expect you'd see a price rise to about $40,000 and then a rollover and a capitulation in order for it to mirror what those last two have done. But as of right now, the actual structure for Bitcoin looks nothing like what those two did. However, there are other things that corroborate going down to those price levels. And really, it's something I've talked about on my channel for years and why I thought the top of Bitcoin was coming in in late 2021. And it's due to a super cycle theory on Bitcoin. And that while a lot of people thought that this was an actual cycle reset for Bitcoin in 2018, that it actually wasn't, that it was actually the exact same pit stop we've had in previous bull runs, but just that this is taking a significantly longer amount of time. And this is actually the third time that we've done a super cycle of this size. And that in here in 2018, the structure that we had was actually identical to that of what we had in 2013. Even when it initially crashed, retraced, and reaccumulated, it was the same thing as a crash, retrace, and reaccumulation in here. This structure was identical to this structure. And you can even see it right in here in this, like when we pull up here, we pull back A, B, C. A, B, C. And that the whole move up in here was merely just a completion of a super cycle for Bitcoin. And if we were going to do what we've done in typical cycle resets is that it does pull back down into that level right there, 10,500. And as many people say, hey, we've never gone back below a previous all time high before. We certainly did in here. We did right back here in the super cycle. And it's not surprising that we did in here on Bitcoin's price chart because it has done it before. So this does corroborate that price level of 10,500. However, the price action of how we're getting there, saying that we have to dip 83% or 85% and it'll take one year to one year in two months, structurally, it's absolutely nothing like what happened in the past. So to understand theories out there on why people believe we need to fall 85%, we still need to fall further and that it's gonna happen sometime between November and over here in late December, is because when you overlay the previous large bear markets for Bitcoin and their fractals, that's where they take you to. And they both did the same thing. The big problem with that is that the structure of what we are doing currently is not the same of those two, and that we have dipped further than both of them did. And if we were to start showing similarities to both of them, one would think that you would at least see a rise back up for Bitcoin to near $40,000 and then a rollover afterwards. So 
There's one more reason why people also believe that the price needs to go lower, and we'll stack it here on top, is that one, we've got the previous fractals that would say November through December for an 85% crash if we repeat the last two major crashes for Bitcoin. Two, looking at super cycles of Bitcoin, it also brings us back down into that price level of 10,500. And three, it's going back to talk about what we followed for several months here in the cryptocurrency market for Bitcoin, where that fractal showed up right there. And that for some reason, as strange as it was, a bear market fractal from deep within Bitcoin's previous 2018 bear market appeared right here at the all time high for Bitcoin, which going back to this chart we were just looking at over here in the market cap, that'd be like saying this fractal right in here showed up at the very top of Bitcoin for some reason. And if we're going to continue following along with what that has done in here, that says we go down even deeper. We go down to 14,500 if we continue following that. Obviously things got pretty broken up in here and things started changing in here. But looking at the daily time frame, one we, the one thing that we can see here for Bitcoin is that this area right here actually did end up hitting the 200 day moving average. So here we are, for some reason we get stopped out here and do not follow along with what Bitcoin did up here, but it hits the 200 day moving average. Well, if we actually go back into time and go look at that fractal from 2018, well, that run back up in here got back to the 200 day moving average before capitulating. So we see that, that from a perspective of fractals and perspective of moving averages, this time period, which is right here, did get to its 200 day moving average and Bitcoin did too. And this thing looks awfully similar. Look, look at a smaller time frame in here to see that even though it didn't get as high, look at how it ended in here. It looked quite similar here at the end, but really that's about it. At that point from there, uh, the, the fractal really started looking a whole lot different in here, except for where we paused out right here and where we are currently right now. And if you kind of take that fractal and just kind of shift it over here to say, hey, look, this is where we've been bouncing in here. You can see, hey, look, uh, this initial profit take on shorts closing in here, it's all kind of in the same kind of vicinity, right? And so if you're gonna see more negative price action, where would you get down to? You'd get down here to about $15,000 for Bitcoin. So. You kind of have that fractal that showed up there at the all time high for Bitcoin, a deep bear market fractal emerging in here. If you were to say we're continuing to follow this, it says, hey, you have a, a little bit of a dip further to go. If you're following super cycle theory, it says, hey, you've got to go down to 10,500. And if you're saying Bitcoin had these exact same corrections that were 83% on the market cap, 84% to 86% on the price chart, that says you got to get down to 10,000 to $12,000, right? So you have super cycle theory saying 10,500. You have previous bear markets saying 10,000 to 12,000. And then you have this odd fractal that showed up here at the all time high that tells you right there around 14,500. So those are your trifecta of different things pointing to saying that the price has to dip lower. And that's the reason why a lot of people believe those things as well. So that's the cases for all of those. But of course, all of them have their own nuances to go with them. You look at this fractal, you can see, hey, followed it pretty well up in here. Then after we got in here, things got real sloppy on here. And so you're pretty much just having to say, we're just gonna continue following the same price levels as the fractal, even though we're not mirroring the fractal anymore, like we did for six months back in here. But at this point, we're no longer mirroring this thing anymore. But you'd have to sit there and say, yeah, we're not mirroring it, but we're just, we're gonna fall to the same price level. So the nuance of this thing is that it's not a splitting image of it like it used to be. The nuance of going with the idea that it's going to take a year to a year and two months for Bitcoin to complete an 83% correction on the market cap or 84 to 86% on the price chart is you'd have to sit here and say, yeah, we're in no way following what these past ones look like, but still we're going to do it. So we do know that structurally, even this whole price pullback that we've seen in Bitcoin is not the same as these two. And if we are going to start looking like this, the next phase would be a bounce up to about 40K, then a fall, but not a straight fall from right here. If you fell straight from right here, you would just absolutely look nothing like what happened in those last two. So the nuance with this one is structurally, Bitcoin has gone deeper and Bitcoin has had no bounces. Then at the same time, when it comes to super cycle theory, 
We know that Bitcoin did come up a little bit short than what full super cycle theory would have done over here with the price getting closer to about 80,000. So it did come up a little bit short. And in addition, once again, this was an orderly correction that was pulling back down in here in order for it to A, B, C. Right now, we've just been straight line down. So are we gonna get an A, B, C to come back down in here? Or as most people are kind of hoping for is that it just goes straight line down. In which if we do that, there's no A, B, C Elliott wave structure happening in here. So the structure also changes from what happened back in the past. We have followed this structure incredibly well the whole way up to getting up to here to assume super cycle and to assume previous fractals, both of them would give you some sort of a bounce. Now, of course, all of those scenarios where Bitcoin dips down the lower assumes that Bitcoin is going to go into a new bull run. But there's also the idea out there that I've presented as well is that Bitcoin could not go into a new bull run and that Bitcoin's actually already completed its super cycles. It's done nothing but being a bull run during an equity and stock market bull market and that the equity and stock market is going to go into a prolonged bear market and that Bitcoin could go with it as well. And that if we look at how like Ethereum ended back in 2017 is that it had a pretty big decent pull down in here and then worked its way back up and then eventually rolled over and went super deep. So I think there's a lot of people looking out there at the different scenarios for a bull market, but this one is still on the table too. So while we're all trying to figure out how Bitcoin is going to bounce or bottom, that I don't think a lot of people are taking into consideration that Bitcoin could possibly not be doing another four year bull run cycle, but that the next cycle for Bitcoin is actually prolonged bear because that is what Ethereum ended up doing. And if we look through the history of the Bitcoin price chart by looking at the ticker BLX or Brave New Coin Liquid Index, we can see Bitcoin from back here at five cents to see that this entire run was equivalent to this entire run, which was equivalent to this entire run. And that a pullback down below $3,000 after five waves would make logical sense. And if we look at the monthly MACD, monthly, this thing is in full blown crashing mode here on the MACD after having three waves. One bullish wave, two bullish waves, three bullish waves of maximum proportions. And that this thing is just in absolute free fall. So there you have it. That's all the bearish stuff out there to not scare the daylights out of you, but to really to explain out there why there's so much bearishness in content creation, or at least for me to find all the different bearish reasons people could be bearish for ideas being presented to them saying, hey, look, it's going to be until November or December or January that the bottom's going to come in. And it's because we have to follow what the last two times did. Well, we can see there's differences between those as well. Or if we're doing, you know, super cycle crash and it's going down to 10,500, well, then, you know, that's the justification for that. Or if it's following that 2018 fractal, which it's done from the very top of Bitcoin, saying it's going down to 15,000. Or even if it is crumbling on itself, like Ethereum did, we could see, hey, you know, this is where it's got to pull back to for Bitcoin. That's, again, like $15,000 or so. But what does every single one of these scenarios say if we are doing any of those? If we're dipping down lower, if we're pulling off something like this for Bitcoin, if we are doing something like this, or even if the super cycle theory is in play, all of them say the, mar the market bounces after that, right? The market bounces back to around 40K, even in the awful situation of if Bitcoin is going to head all the way down to $2,000. If we're following a structure similar to what Ethereum did, we could see where Ethereum got down to just right down here underneath the all time high, not quite hitting that 786 fib. Bitcoin getting below that all time high, not quite hitting that 786 fib. Still, Ethereum bounced in here right back up there to the 2.618. A bounce for Bitcoin back to the 2.618 gets you right there to about 45,000. So, even in that gloom and doom scenario, right, there's still a pretty big bounce and retracement coming for Bitcoin. So that's a lot of stuff out there. That's a lot of bear stuff out there, but I thought it'd be cool to present it all so we can all have an idea of where people are coming from and their thought processes in that. And that if we look at the 2014 and 2018 bear markets and assume that we're going to do exactly the same thing that those did, well, up until this point, we haven't been doing what those are doing. So something else appears to be at play here 
unless if Bitcoin can get some type of bounce up to $40,000. Then it starts to make more sense in relation to these previous bear markets. But as of right now, it looks absolutely nothing like what the last ones did. And to assume November or December or January, well, we're just not following along with how those played out at that time. And zooming out, we all know we've had a very unique topping structure come in in here for Bitcoin, whereas previously, parabolic rise, boom, bear market. Parabolic rise, boom, bear market. Parabolic rise, fall, then another new all-time high, suddenly having a bear market fractal from the top, and then moving on down, right? But the height of all indicators suggest that the euphoria phase of this market, the blow off top of this market all took place back here, which was back during this time period right back in here. And we can even see that on the indicators happening in here that every time that we really had the blow off top, it came in at the top. Um, yet this time it happened back in here rather than where we're measuring this top coming in from. And that we know our current price action is not playing out like what past bear markets for Bitcoin have played out like. But for some reason, coming from the all-time high up in here, we're showing bear market fractals from the very top. So does it make any sense that the actual top of the market from an on-chain perspective occurred way back in here and way back in here? And suddenly, when we start looking at it from that manner to say, hey, look, we, we see the indicators, we see that all of the excitement in the market took place way back in here, which usually when we're having our blow off tops, we're hitting maximum strength happening in here, maximum overbought, then we collapse, maximum overbought, then we collapse, that the maximum bought happened way back in here with laser eyes and diamond hands. Does the chart start looking a little bit more familiar and make a little bit more sense of why we are showing bear market fractals from deep within here from the very, very top? And then suddenly we start seeing this in here and you say, wait a minute, hold up. Uh, th this is looking all too familiar uh, right in here and that maybe this market has actually already bottomed and that the peak euphoria did take place back in here the day that Coinbase IPO'd and that the whole move that we've had down in here has been that of the entire bear market already finishing itself, in which we even have this little ABC take place in here right along the way, and that we've already pulled down full full depth. And then suddenly as well, when we look at it from that perspective, you do say to yourself, well, wait a minute, it has been a year and two months. That's how long it took. It was off by a matter of less than a month being similar to a time perspective of how long the whole thing took to play out from when the peak euphoria was. When Coinbase IPO, it was peak euphoria. The market pulled back and set a new low. This is Elon Musk going on Saturday Night Live, all the craziness. And then that was peak euphoria of the actual market. And from a time perspective of since we've had peak euphoria in the market, enough time has actually already elapsed in here. And that the pullback that did happen for Bitcoin in here actually pulled all the way back to its previous all-time high and back-tested the all-time high from 2017. In addition, one of the things throughout history as well is that on the weekly time frame, Bitcoin typically finds support there around the 200 week moving average. We can't see this on here. Let me move to another chart. We'll go back to the BLX over here that once we get down to this 200 week moving average in here, this historically has been how deep we end up going before the market ends up bouncing out of here. So Bitcoin has not only gotten to the 200 week moving average, it has also gotten back down to the previous all time high. It has also shown the same structure that happens at the final capitulation of a market. And from the time when the peak euphoria hit the market with Coinbase's IPO, that's how much time has elapsed for this whole thing to play out in here. In addition, from a Fibonacci retracement perspective for the entire wave since C19 hit, and we check and see how high we went and then how high or how far we've pulled back, we can see that we've done a perfect 786 Fibonacci retracement here of our entire move. So we also have a Fib retracement level coming in at the exact same point where we've bounced, which is also the exact same structure of ending capitulations. And why would it make any sense to say, hey, look, you know, using this fractal from here from the all time high and then pulling back down in here. Well, like shown earlier in the video, it was that this particular fractal right here is the one that showed up here at the all time high for Bitcoin right in here. So we had a depth, a deep bear market fractal show up from the very top, which is also the same place within Bitcoin's previous bear market, which is right there. 
which is right here. So overlaying those on top of themselves tells you, hey, wait a minute, we've actually done the same thing as we have done before. Another thing giving some hope to the bulls that the bottom is actually already in for Bitcoin is if you check the relative strength index. And if we look at it over here on the weekly time frame to see how far down we have gotten in here, have we capitulated from a strength perspective? And we can see here on the relative strength, these were the bottoms of the previous Bitcoin bear markets when they came in. Once we finally got into oversold strength on the relative strength index, and at that moment in time right there, we did. We can see the last Last few times back in 2014 and 15, it poked right below it. That was the bottom right here. In 2018, we poked just barely below it. That was the bottom right back in here. And right now we have poked our way below it and poked right back out, which is this time right here. After enough time has elapsed since peak euphoria in the market with the same structure that happens at ending capitulations while at the same time reaching back to the 200 week moving average. Another measurement tool out there is the Crypto Fear and Greed Index, which we can see right now is at a 34. We're in fear, and we've been in fear for really the last week, but we can see last month extreme fear. And if we look over the course of the last year, we could see that we actually spent quite some time down here in extreme fear, sometimes hitting these single digit numbers of extreme fear, an eight over here, a six, and staying in here from early May until early July, so about 60 days in absolute extreme fear. If we look throughout history of when this index was made or this indicator was made, there's only been two other times in history where we were actually in that much fear. And that was during the C-19 sell-off back in March of 2020. And we spent a prolonged time period in extreme fear. Once we bounced out of there, the bottom was confirmed to be in. The only other time that we were this fearful for this long was actually the bottom of the 2018 bear market, which we were hitting those same types of numbers, not even as low, really. I think maybe one day, let's see, really these are 12s and 15s and 17s and 10s and 11s in here. And then once we bounced out of there, the bottom was in for the bear market. And here, even more fear for even longer, and we bounced out. So the two other times that we've had that happen, the bottom was already in. And even this circumstance, if we want to count it, this is May, June, and July of 2021, we didn't reach as extreme fear, but we spent a prolonged time period bouncing between fear and extreme fear. Once we came out of there, the bottom was in and Bitcoin ran up from 30K to 69K. So this indicator in itself, the fear and greed index, anytime we spend that much time in extreme fear, once we come out of there, the bottom is in. As we can see, after spending over 60 days in extreme fear, we've bounced out of it now, which would support the idea that the top of peak euphoria was back there when Coinbase IPO'd back in April, and that we've actually just been working our way down here in the final capitulation, and we've already completed it by backtesting the previous all-time high for Bitcoin's market cap while at the same time reaching the most oversold relative strength in history, and again, getting back there to that 200-week moving average. All of those things combined would tell you the bottom is actually already in, and that we're not following what we did in 2018 and 2014, and that we have to go down deeper, and that we're no longer following what happened back in here, and that we're just bouncing in here and have one more little move to do, but that the bottom of this move, the extreme fear was already hit, the structure was already hit, it's done. The next thing to do is either consolidate or start working its way back up. But what this still doesn't do is it doesn't answer whether or not Bitcoin is going to go into a brand new bull run because it did not do this. It did not do an A, B, C. It did not do an A, B, C. It went straight from all time high down from all time high down with no ABC correction in here. So could it actually just pull all the way back up to right here again and then turn over on itself and fall? Well, it would make a little bit of logical sense because where would that pull back get you back to and it gets you right back to the 702 Fibonacci retracement and then roll its way on over and head down deeper and finally close out the super cycle stuff, close all gaps or do what Ethereum did. And that will be the great mystery of what is to come soon, or at least over the course of the next year. 
Now, there is one last thing I need to show you because I made a video back on December 6th saying the bear strikes the Bitcoin price chart. And I presented three different scenarios on how I could imagine Bitcoin's bear market playing out because I did believe that Bitcoin was in a bear market back in December of last year. One of the crazy scenarios that I came up with because I've seen it a couple of times before would be that Bitcoin would fall back to the lows, have two bounces sideways and then capitulate its way down and that there would be the potential of a recovery to go set a new all-time high. As we know, that's exactly what Bitcoin has done. It fell down to the lows, had two bounces sideways, and then capitulated below the low, as I had shown here in this video back in December of last year, which opens up the door for a new all-time high. So have we ever seen something like that happen before in Bitcoin or have we ever seen it happen in any other markets? And we have seen that structure happen right here in Bitcoin before. It happened during this big run that Bitcoin had here in 2017 in which Bitcoin rolled up. It was a big, massive surge, came up, had a big fall, set a new all time high, bounced a couple of times near the low, broke below the low and then reversed off into an all-time high, then eventually it ended up collapsing on itself afterwards. We also saw that over here on the Dow Jones Industrial Average back in 2018. Parabolic rise, big fall, comes up, barely sets a new high, pulls back down to the lows with a couple of bounces, and then capitulates down below these lows, then recovers to set a new all-time high, and then what happens? Loses it all and it completely falls apart afterwards. These happen in Bitcoin and they happen in the stock market where you get really knocked back, barely set a new high, don't do any kind of retraces, but just kind of double bounce and then set a new low and recover. Bitcoin has done it too, but it was not the start of a new bull market, but really just like one more final excess before things really fell apart afterwards. That's really the idea of this back in here is to say we've seen these type of things happen before where if there is no retrace and it just hangs out at these lows like this and then sets a new low that it can go on and set a new all time high. And so far, that is what we've seen happen over here on Bitcoin. Big fall, barely sets a new high, couple of bounces at the lows, breaks the low and sets you up with the potential to set a new all time high. Uh, the great thing about this being my YouTube channel is while I'm not an investment advisor, I'm not a financial advisor, it's not investment advice, but I can make my own guess on which one I think is likely. And I can kind of put my own probabilities on what I think is going to happen is that, well, okay, so we've back tested the all time high to go on and set a new all time high for Bitcoin. I put probably like a 10% probability on that happening. The case for that happening would have to be that this is a one, two, three, four, five. I still wouldn't think that Bitcoin would even hit $100,000 if it did. It would just go on and hit what the super cycle measurement was that we showed earlier in the video, which is right around $80,000. We came up a little bit short on that. Would that be the thing that finally gets it there? Maybe. But still, I put 10% probability on that from the way I think about the market. And when I'm presenting what I think is going on in the market or my thoughts on the market, this is one I'm minimally vested in as actually happening. But you could see the cases for why it could. It would still mean it only gets up to like 80,000 and then collapses on itself afterwards. Most market participants would probably expect the $200,000, $300,000 Bitcoin, but still it would reverse on itself and collapse. That's the most bullish scenario I can come up with for Bitcoin at all. Otherwise, I do think these price levels are going to get visited. And the big question is, is it going to be from here? Is it going to be Bitcoin going back into a retracement from here and then visiting it? Or is it going to be Bitcoin visiting it right now? There are going to be people who think it's never going to visit here. So any thoughts that I provide on any of that would be silly and irrelevant. But just for fun, let's do the exercise. I put a 10% probability on the fact that we're going to set a new all-time high for Bitcoin. It's really just based on what Bitcoin did back there in 2017 and what the Dow Jones did back in 2018, that there's still an extended wave five, but it would still only get to like 80,000. 10% probability, I think, on that. I put a 20% probability on it that it still has to capitulate one more time. The reality is it has done this twice before. This is the depths of where the bears have gone to. It's definitely not following the same structure in here. 
But from a time perspective of technically where the top was, it would say that we still keep going and we keep waddling along until November and December before the bottom gets set in. And if we are still following this thing, which we mirrored perfectly for six months, it would still say there's still one more dip to happen in here. So I put a 10% probability on a new all-time high. I put a 20% probability that we're actually going to break down any lower than here. The 20% is derived from the previous two bear markets that we've had and this fractal from back in 2018. But I put 70% confidence on it to say that the bottom is actually already in for Bitcoin and that we've already completed it all in regards to this move and this sentiment period of bearishness and capitulation and that we've already done everything we need to do from when the Coinbase IPO happened back in here to how this structure has played out in here and the depths of it and where it found its support at here back on top of the 2018 all-time high and that it also found support right there on that last Fibonacci retracement level at the exact same time. My confidence is 70% that the bottom is already in. Because not only do we mirror finishing capitulations, not only have we hit the retracement level, not only have we hit the previous all-time high, we've also set the most oversold relative strength in history. And every time we've done that, the bottom was already in. And our fear and greed index says that every time we've been down here in this much extreme fear, once we got out of it, the bottom was already in. So due to the nuances that take place by saying that we're following this right here is just this phase right in here, due to the inconsistencies of it all in there and the nuances associated with that. I think there's just way more things stacked in the favor of this being the bottom right in here due to it being oversold, due to the fear and greed, due to the fract fractal, due to the 200 week moving average, due to the all time high that we've set ourselves up more so for a bounce back to the upside than to actually break through all of those things. Because a breakdown further breaks the 200 week moving average, it breaks the all time high, it breaks the Fibonacci retracement levels. And it also says that, you know, being oversold didn't matter and that being in fear didn't matter. So I do think that the bottom is actually in, or at least I put the highest probability on it for my confidence that the bottom is already in. The big question is what happens as it comes in here, right? So even that 10% of a new all-time high says the bottom is in. So that puts 80% prob 80 confidence that the bottom is actually already in. But I put 70% of my confidence saying that the bottom is in and that we're just going to go in for some type of retracement. And the big question is where does that retracement come into? And then what happens to Bitcoin afterwards? And I put... 90% probability, right? You say 20% lower, 90% with the 70%, 90% probability, we're gonna see prices way down in here. And even if we do see the, the all-time high, I still say we're coming down here. So I'm like fully confident. <laughs> we'll see these prices down here at some point. But as for the current action that we've seen right now, I think it's more likely that we're gonna see a recovery up in here. At least that's from all the data that I'm looking at. I think it's more likely that we see some type of bounce come out in here. But that doesn't tell you that we're not going to waddle here first, right? It doesn't answer that question if it's gonna do something like that first or if it's going to go in a straight line back up in here. None of, none of this answers any of those types of questions of what it could look like. But I personally put a whole lot more confidence on it that the bottom of this Bitcoin move is already in due to the all-time high, due to the Fibonacci retracements, due to the ending fractals of capitulation, the amount of time it took since the Coinbase IPO, due to the relative strength being oversold, due to the fear and greed index, and not to mention that the altcoin market as well found support right there on top of the 200 week moving average, keeping candle closes above its previous all time high, as did the Bitcoin market cap chart, able to hold those candle closes above the previous all time high. And so did the Bitcoin price chart, keeping candle closes above the previous candle closes of the past all time high. So. I will go ahead and wrap this thing up. It is almost 40 minutes long. It has taken a long time and a lot of effort to put this thing together. I wanted to give all the bears all of their arguments. I wanted to give the bulls their arguments. I didn't really give the $200,000, $300,000 price predictions for Bitcoin arguments <laughs> a whole lot of love. But still, I think we're more focused on what's happening right now than how high the price can go later. But I hope that you guys enjoyed it. If you like this content, please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and wrap this thing up because I've taken too much of your time today. But I want to thank you so much for watching. If you could, please like this video and give it a thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe and hit the notification bell so you could be notified of when I create new content and when I go live. As always, this is not investment advice and I am not a financial advisor. 
But if you ever need a pick-me-up or a little bit of reassurance, just remember that the blockchain backers got your back. Have a good one.